for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father God, that you sent the unction, you sent the anointing into the earth to teach us, to guide us, to lead us, to equip us, to walk in your realm, the realm of the Spirit. In Jesus' name, we ask for fresh anointing in every life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the freshness of your Spirit upon us today. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you agree with that, you can turn around and shake somebody's hand and say, I, I thank God for the anointing. And then you can be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. I guess I got a halo this morning, don't I? I'm getting the halo effect. I can't get back far enough to get out of the glory. All right. Well, praise God. We're glad you're here this morning. Glad to have you. Um, just a real quick announcement. Don't forget, two weeks from the day after church, we're going over to Jamestown Park, shelter number one for our 
annual um, Down East Barbecue, six fifty for adults, five fifty for children. If you are taking food with you, you have to pay for it. You can eat while you're there, but when you get it, walk out. You're walking out with four plates. You're buying four plates <laughs> on top of what you've already bought, Nate. All right, Hallelujah. A few years ago, we turned around. We had, we had cooked and cooked and cooked, and some people got there, and somebody's walking out with 15 plates. That's where we had to start. we had just had to change how we did it at that point. It was like they just free for all. They walked out with a bunch of food, and there was stuff for people who who were coming that did, actually paid for the meal that time. They wrote the check to pay for the majority of the food. They didn't even get half of what they wanted because somebody walked out of there with that. And we can't do that. So why? <laughs> anyway, you're welcome to come and eat and be with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. But if, you're, if you want to take home, you've got to pay. All right. Which is fair. I mean, you don't get to go into a restaurant, go to an all-you-can-eat buffet, and then walk up there to the thing with 10 plates and get 10 extras of food when you get done paying for your meal. Okay? They're going to charge you for each plate. Okay? Hallelujah. And, and our cost on this meal is, uh, we got a few things that cost us money that we, we can't recoup. We do, the oil itself is like $85 just to buy the oil. But we do it once a year. It's the best fried chicken you ever wrap your lips around. I could guarantee you that. Uh, I mean, I'm just telling you. In the cornbread sticks, you can't get anywhere except Wilson and Greenville, so you got to may as well come here and instead of driving that far to get them. Amen? Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Well, at this time, we're, we're going to see our Sunday morning tithe and offering. If you're not offering envelope, please raise your hand. Otherwise, we can give electronically. Um, I probably ought to uh, put my volume down on my phone because uh, right in the middle of service, I'd be getting a phone call or something. And you hear Mission Impossible going off. And we just don't need that, do we? Praise the Lord. All right. Yeah, I forgot to let raise again. If you're giving with Square Cash or if you're giving through PayPal, please go ahead and uh, send your electronic offering. And um, glory to God. Hallelujah. A to the men. Can you say amen? And have you shared this morning's service out on your, your um, Facebook feed? If you haven't, go ahead and do that. Make sure people are here to watch us. Uh, if you're on Facebook, you'll see there is a way to, uh, um, the information on giving online is there. You can go ahead and give online. We appreciate uh, anybody who wants to be a part of what we're doing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And uh, glory to God for all your help. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the tithe and for the offering that the people are blessed according to thy word. We thank you that you walk in fullness, supply, overabundance, and overflow because they're givers and tithers into the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. And everybody agree with that by saying amen. amen. Or if you want to be a little bit more like Medea movies, uh, A2 to men, you know, hallelujah. Can you say amen? A2 to men. We like Medea movies. I, I trip out. I mean, I just... I've told you, I remember the first time I watched Meet the Browns. Uh, somebody had told me, Pastor, you've got to watch them, them Tyler Perry movies on Medea. I'd never seen them. And I watched Meet the Browns, the first one I ever saw. I was laying in bed upstairs. We have our TV up on the ceiling. We got it, we got it slanted, so it's up there. So perfect viewing angle for laying in bed. And uh, I rolled out of the bed in the floor, crawled up to the side of the bed, and was just beating the side of the bed. I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard. You know, when he said, your dad is a pimp, that was it. I was gone. <laughs> that whole scene was, I cracked. I mean, I just cracked. So, but that was always a good story in there. Jesus always comes out in his movies. And so, hallelujah. Amen. All right, children's church, guys, you're dismissed. Guys, y'all dismissed. Miss James, back there waiting on you. Hallelujah. Ready to have y'all back there. The rest of you, go ahead and open your Bibles. Uh, once again to the fifth chapter of the uh, book of Genesis. We started last week on walking with God, and um, we're not going to cover a lot of what we covered last week. We're just going to read these verses, and then we'll move on. Uh, chapter 5 of Genesis, verses 21 through 24. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. All the days of Enoch were 365 years. And he didn't walk with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, um, we said last week, he had 365 years old. His first kid was born when he was 65. 
That's five years from where I am right now. Not sure if I want to start over at 65. Hallelujah. Um, we talked about last week how the earth, you know, the conditions of the earth, I mean, just, um, the perversion and the degradation of, of society, humanity, uh, the stuff that's going on on the earth today. I mean, it's just all over. We have, we have false religions rising up trying to overthrow everything. We got people in our own country trying to stomp out Christianity at every turn and every opportunity. A lot of this stuff they keep hollering, you know, uh, tolerance and, you know, acceptance and all this stuff applies to everybody except Christians. Okay? If you're a believer, you don't count. Okay? Um, so it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's evil. It's, it's the devil. Um, you know, our school systems, you know, we can't pray. We can't talk about God in the school because that's forced religion, you know. And then, and a, and a uh, men, evil men that were on the Supreme Court voted in, you know, Brown versus whatever, you know, and they eliminated prayer in the schools and all this kind of stuff. And uh, all this garbage, you know, that, you know, there's, a separate, there's an impenetrable wall uh, separating the church and the state. That was Jefferson's writings. That was not in the Constitution. Personal opinion has no, no bearing on the Constitution. But anyway, um, I argue, and quite accurately so, that the uh, separation clause also includes the uh, prohibition clause. The government shall establish no um, you know, law establishing religion, nor prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That's just as much as part of that a, a part of that statement as the first part. Okay, the secular humanism, which sees atheism as God, the absence of God as a, is a five hundred one c three recognized religion by the IRS. Therefore, it's a religion. The absence of teaching of God or the absence of allowing of any dialogue about God in the schools is the enforcement of a state religion of atheism. I don't really care what you think. It is. We are enforcing. We have established a state religion, forced state religion, because you are prohibited from talking about Jesus and sharing, you know, and stuff. Teachers can't talk. You know, I mean, you know, students have to come to you, and it has to be done very whatever, and even at that, it's, it's, it's iffy. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can't wear a T-shirt in school that says, I love Jesus without getting a call to the principal's office. You can't walk away with your Bible without, you know, some liberal nutbag calling you in and saying, you can't have that in the school. Okay? So, we are having forced religion in our schools of atheism. We have violated the first part of the amendment, of the First Amendment. Violated it. And violate the second part by not allowing the free exercise thereof. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, Brother Bill. Thank you. All right. So our world is in chaos now. And but Enoch walked on an evil time. Men's hearts were evil continually. So we, have, we want to move on because we don't have time to spend, you know, there today um, like we did last week. All right. So what, although that, that's the status of the earth that Enoch walked in, how is he successful? Well, the Bible says he walked with God and was not. So we read a lot into that. We can get over into Genesis where it says, I mean, not Genesis, but um, um, the book of Hebrews where it says, you know, he, uh, he, he walked by faith and he pleased God, okay? Um, he walked in divine direction. And my, my first two points are he walked in divine direction he walked in agreement with God. You have to walk in agreement with God to walk in divine direction, okay? All right? Uh, you, you, have to, you have to decide to walk with God. You have to follow his plans and purposes, not your own. Too many believers are spending time trying to come up with a plan, bring it to God and say, bless my mess. I got my plan. If you go get his plan, it's already pre-blessed. And it's not like those things you get in the mail pre-approved. Zero percent interest for 25 years, pre-approved, you know, credit card. And you call them up and we don't approve you. But I was pre-approved. How can I be pre-approved but not approved? Okay. Well, bogus. Just to get you to call in and get them, maybe get a hook on you or something. 
Okay? Um, we cannot walk our way. No matter how bad that the church wants to make it so we can all be like Frank Sinatra, and then, of course, Elvis did his own you know, cover version of it, you know, and then we can all live our life, and life we can say, I did it my way. As you bust the doors of hell down. Because that's where you go when you do it your way. You got to do it God's way. God has a way. Well, I just think, we, you know, that God loves everybody. And anybody's going to get to heaven no matter what. Your way, you know, Jesus said that, you know, um, there is, hey, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father but by me. That's as narrow-minded as you can get. Sorry. So, if you think he's one of the many great prophets and, you know, they all have a way. No, Jesus said, I'm the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. You can't get there through Muhammad. You can't get there through Buddha. You can't get there through the two million Hindu gods. You can't get there, you know, worshiping the moon. Some of you older folks remember the Reverend Sin Young Moon and the Moonies. Okay? Um, you're not going in there by, by eating yourself to death, as Buddha tried. First, uh, overeating himself, he starved himself. If you go, you'll find, you actually find statues in some places in the world of the skin. Because he tried starving himself first, and he got a revelation that that's not going to work. <laughs> if you want to eat, you got to eat. Then he started, start, then he started gorging himself and got huge, and so now in most places you have fat Buddhists. Okay? The, the bottom line is, Jesus and I'm the way. Your way won't work. See, God has a plan, and God has a path, and God has a direction. And if you want to walk in the fullness of the blessings, you want to walk in the plan of God, you want to walk and receive all that God's for you, you got to follow him. Now, I remember a few years ago, a number of years ago, um, uh, Scott Webb was here with us, and he had gone down to, they, taking, uh, I don't know, family members or whatever, they had gone down to Charlotte to the Lowe's Motor Speedway and did that, that like the Richard Petty driving school thing. Okay, and they sat him in the room, and they all talked to him about they're going to go out there, they're going to get in the car, they're going to go out there, they got the lead car, and we called them the big dog or the lead dog, all right, and they're going to get out there, they're going to get up to speed, and they tell them, you've got to stay eight car lengths behind me. If you close that gap, we will pull off and, and shut the whole thing down. Well, at those speeds, those, those, those people who don't ever drive that aren't equipped to handle being closer if something happens. So everybody had to say eight car lengths behind. And so he, he preached that sermon, talked about staying eight car lengths behind. You know, we got to follow in behind God and pace with God at a, all the time where we can see him leading us and walk, walk in lockstep with how he's walking. Amen? We got to stay. We got to see with God, it's not eight car lengths behind. That was just that. We can, we, we, the Bible even likens us to being like hind's feet or deer's feet. That you know, we're tracking. But my, my graduation sermon at Rama was preached by Dr. Oral Roberts, and he preached on tracking with God. I don't remember a whole lot about the sermon except the Heinz feet part. That this that struck me. He said, "Your first feet go down when they come up. The back feet come and hit the same spot. Wherever the print of the front feet were when he's running, their hind feet come up and hit right there. And we're to track with God." Where God walks, so that means we gotta be we gotta be close enough to see where he's walking, but not too close that we're that we're trying to run over him and miss. Okay, yeah. If if, if um if I'm trying to walk in somebody's footsteps, I can't be so close to them that I'm overstepping where they're stepping, and I can't be so far behind them I can't see what they're doing. Okay, so we walk with God. When He steps, we step in that place, and then we step in that place, and we step in that place. That's tracking with God. That's, how, that's what we're supposed to do. He's leading us. He's guiding us. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. We have to walk in the divine direction of God, primarily through the, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our life. He will not, he leadeth me in the green pastures. He leads you by the still waters. The 23rd Psalm is an allegory of the New Testament life. Amen? Amen. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Okay? So, I mean, that's a whole allegorical thing in the 23rd Psalm. 
But we've got to walk with God. He's going to lead us. But she got so many people that don't trust nobody. They don't trust God. I don't agree. Well, no. Now, how many of you have ever done the three-legged race? You know, as a kid, at some point in time, you know, they, you got one leg in the bag, and the other person got one leg in the bag, and y'all took off running. Now, what happens if the person beside you is taking the leg, leg in the back and pushing it backwards, and you're pushing it forward? Where are you going? <laughs> right, face down. Boom. I tell the kids at school, I said, I said listen, this is no sag zone. If, man, if you had to take off running, you'd fall flat on your face. You know, pants down to here and all this mess. We, we don't allow it, but they do it. You know, they do it anyway. Get them pants up. Nobody will see your boxers. If you had to take off with an emergency, you took off running, you fall flat on your face. And they would. Saw one day he was trying to get to class sometimes, trying to hold his pants up while he's running. Didn't just go ahead and pull them on up. He's trying to run through the holes, you know, halls, holding them down there so they don't go any further. Because why? He's going to fall flat on his face. Okay. But, you know, in a three-legged race, what's got, you've got to determine both the outside legs have got to go forward at the same time and both middle legs have got to go forward at the same time. Or else, you can't walk together. You can't walk together. Hello? Now, we would not want to take either one of the church girls and put them in a three-legged race with Abdul-Jabbar. That would, that would, that's, would be ugly. Well, just thinking about it would be hilarious. Yeah, Cap said they'd be going in circles. <laughs> First and ten. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> All right. You got to spend time with God. You got to, you got to strategize together. You got to go to him and find out what we're doing. Amen. You've got to know what God wants you to do. You've got to spend time in his word with him. You've got to be ready to go so you can walk in agreement with him. You just can't take off and go, and well, I'm walking in agreement with God. Well, how do you know? You have to spend any time with him. You know? Is he using his right leg first or the middle leg in, in the bag first? Which one are we doing? Okay. Three, we know that Enoch walked by faith. According to Hebrews 11, 5 and 6, it says, by faith Enoch Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and he was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For they that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is the rewarder of them that diligently what? Seek him. So we know that Enoch sought God. We know that, so we know that he walked in harmony with God. We know that he walked by faith because he pleased God. He walked in agreement with God. Okay? Well, because the Bible says he walked with God, you know, and how can two walk together except they be agreed? So we know he walked in agreement. He walked in divine direction. He walked by faith. In the midst of a perverse and corrupt generation, he still was able to walk this way. Amen. Even when everything around him was evil. He could walk this way. All right? We are challenged with the same kind of uh, call from God. That we are to walk the plan of God. The, the new narrative seems to be in the church uh, because uh, the world that like, you know, uh, people be looking like they actually are walking with God, act like the world and maybe that will get them over to the kingdom. S M H. Shaking my head. You're like, I don't know if they've got one for dumbfounded look. D F M or D F L. Dumbfounded look. I'm like, some of the stuff we come up with, be more like the world, you'll win them to Jesus. No, be more like Jesus, you win them to Jesus. He said, he did not say, go in the world. He said, he did not say, lift up the culture and I'll draw men in. He said, lift me up and I'll draw men into me. Shine Jesus. Amen. Um, New Testament faces challenges. We face daily challenges. We face a world that is, that is gone chaotic. 
It's cray cray out there. Well, we can't hunt down some kind of bunker and hold on until Jesus gets back. That's not what we're called to do. That's not our calling. That's not our purpose. Amen. We are to go, you know, like one, one song said, you know, secret service Christians are not needed at this time. Shouting hallelujah as they run behind the lines. You remember that song? Brother Bill remembers that song. Remember that song? Do you ever hear that song? Dick didn't hear that song. Yeah. I, don't remember, I can't quite remember the tune to it, but secret service Christians are not needed at this time. Shouting hallelujah as they run behind the lines. We need, we need warriors. We need soldiers. We need those who walk with God and can go into the lion's den and come out uh, with, with lion hair on them from where they took a nap. Amen? And then go in the fiery furnace and get it burned off and then come without smelling like smoke. Amen. And so as believers, we face that, you know, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Now, somehow or another, we charismatic word of faith people. Brother Hagin used to do this all the time. Some folks think they're going, some folks think they're going to life on flowery beds of ease. That the blessings of God are going to fall on them like, fall on them like ripe cherries off a tree. Nothing can be further from the truth. The Bible tells us to fight the good fight of faith. The, the letter to the church of Corinth says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. There's a battle. Hello? When we don't tell people there's going to be a battle, we do them no disservice. Oh, if you'll just come and get under grace, everything will just be lovely. You're setting them up for failure. There's a devil out there who's just not going to walk away and leave you alone. He left Jesus for a season. What does that mean? He came back. I said he came back. He keeps coming back. His ultimate goal is to defeat you. Okay? We're equipped to win every time, but you're going to have to fight battles. You're going to have to stand your ground. You're going to have to get in there in the midst of the fiery furnace or in the lion's den and live your faith walk. Amen. And win the battle. You're going to have to slay some giants. You're going to have to kill some, you're going to have to kill some uh, uh, Philistines. Amen. Oh, Jesus did it all for me. He's equipped you to win all that. He's defeated the enemy. But I'm telling you, there's still an enemy here you've got to deal with. Have you come to cast it to the pit before the time? And he did not because it wasn't the time. That time has not come yet. They're still here. And they're still arrayed against the church. And if you haven't dealt with anything, you just got saved this morning. We walked through the door and had, had time. Because it's, it's going to come. That's not a negative confession. You can say, I don't receive that in Jesus' name. You can say that all day long. But you can't make a confession that's not biblically based. Hello? It's not a Bible confession if it's not biblically based or not biblically supported. I'm never going to have trouble with the devil as long as I live. Good luck with that one. Come back in a couple of weeks and let me know how that worked out for you. Because if you're honest, you know you had trouble with the devil. You had to fight him. You had to win. You had to defeat. You had to overcome. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that you can't. I'm, what I'm saying is we need to be realistic in understanding that those things are out there. But what do we do when everything about everything seems to appear to be defeat? How do we go from that position that looks like defeat, that we're, we feel defeated, and if we, don't keep, if we don't get up from where we are, we're going to be defeated, and go into the place of victory? Well, we got to do what Enoch did. We've got to walk with God. We've got to walk in divine direction. We've got to walk um, in harmony with God. We've got to walk by faith if you want to win. The just shall live by faith. How much clearer can we get than that? Amen? Abraham 
um, tell in verse 12 of chapter 4 of Romans, the father of circumcision to them who were not of the uh, was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Okay? We have to live by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we, we live a lifestyle of living by faith. Now, there's more involved in the lifestyle of faith than believing you got a new car this week. We used a lot of believing and receiving illustrations and teaching back in the heyday of the Word of Faith movement. I, I don't, the Word of Faith will never die. Now, some of our emphases were overemphasized. It's all about your prosperity, all about your, you know, your this, all about you, all about you, all about. And we left out so much that we felt to emphasize the lifestyle of faith is more than a new car or your healed body. It is a daily walk with God. It doesn't mean that we're not talking, we're going to stop believing God to get the things we need or the things we desire in life. It is the emphasis can't only be on those things because then people can just come in and look at God as the sugar daddy of what they can get out of him and forget that living by faith means you, you, you walk with God when it doesn't look good. You walk with God when it doesn't seem good. doesn't mean it's not going to be. You're going to have to walk. You're going to have to believe your way out of that mess and walk with God out of that mess and come out victorious on the other side. That part, that part of the faith, a lot of people don't want to hear. They don't want to deal with conflict. They don't want to deal with trouble. Well, honey, if, you know, one, one, brother, one woman came to Brother Hagin one time and said, Brother Hagin, I want you to pray for me. He said, what for? He said, do I have to tell you? She said, he said, well, I'm not going to pray for you if you don't. She said, I wanted you to pray for me that I wouldn't have any more trouble with the devil. He looked at her and said, what do you want me to do? Pray for you that you die? Because the only way you're not ever going to have any trouble with the devil is die. The Bible says he's the God of this world. He's still functioning. That's a New Testament scripture. Paul wrote it to the church at Corinth. He's the God of this world. You're going to have to deal with him until we leave, until Jesus comes back and establishes his kingdom again. Then he'll be loose for, after a thousand years, and then we've got to deal with him again. Then he'll be, put in the pit for, he'll be put, cast in the lake of fire forever, which is the second death. But we've got to deal with the devil. And when we all we can think of that the word of faith and the message of faith is about what kind of car, nice car you can drive and how big of a house you can have, we've missed so much. That is an aspect. It's not the sum. It's not the whole. Amen? You're going to have to live by faith that God is bringing you out when it feels like and looks like and everything about your senses tells you you're defeated, you're going under, there's no way out been there when it looked like that but i know brother bill's been there sat in the hospital room with him in, in, in chapel hill where he could barely get his arm up it was skin stretched over bone i mean if you're looking at the circumstances you're ready to go help them put the nails in the coffin i mean he he was he made auschwitz he, he, like he could have gone back and done the movie with, on Auschwitz. I'm serious. But out of his heart, the cry came, I'll live and not die. See, he spoke his faith. He wouldn't talk about no car right then. Are you here? Are you here? The battle was something totally different about, about how much money he's got. Okay? See, a lot of Christians are all, are all excited about the prosperity seminar and to get, you know, supernatural debt cancellation, but <clears throat> living when the rubber meets the road and, and, and not dying or living and, and not going under uh, because the enemy is brought by the worst attack you've ever faced in your life, they ain't ready for it. Too much trouble. Hello? Too difficult. Now, this walk of faith is a daily thing in every arena of life. You're going to fulfill God's purpose. You're going to fulfill God, God's destiny. And it's just been about, about 17 months now, 16 months. Yeah. Something like that. 
He was down to 150. Yeah. 62140. You know? And you know, the pastor shows you can't you can't look at circumstances either. I mean the, the 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 weakness, the almost inability to get his arm up to make his declaration was, you know, you just you're looking at that thinking, your mind wants to go, oh my God. But your heart has to agree. Amen. That's right. They hold of the word. Live, not die. Don't quit. Amen. Amen. Your faith will bring you out. My faith didn't bring him out. His faith brought him out. We were agreeing, but his faith brought him out. Because all of the agreeing that we could do in the world would not have worked if he hadn't had his faith involved. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we have to walk by faith. We got to walk in the Spirit. Romans 8 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them that which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Hallelujah. And of course, you got the new gracers come along and say, That's not in there. That's not verse 1. That's not in there. That's not in the original Greek. Okay, you go down to verse 4, and it finishes this whole thought saying, uh, Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's not a discontinued thought there. Verses 1 through 4 are the same thought. So it's in there. Okay? We have to walk after the Spirit. What do you mean? We're divided. We're divinely guided. They that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen? See, so we walk by faith. We walk by the leading of the Spirit. He speaks to us. He guides us. He, he directs us. We listen to the still, small voice. Why? Because He'll keep you from making mistakes. He'll keep you, if you will listen to him and he's telling you not to do something, it's not because he doesn't want you to have fun in life. Or he's trying to cause you not to avoid a catastrophe or a course that will lead you to destruction. Hello? Now, if you go down Guilford College Road right now, they're, they're building a tunnel under Guilford College Road uh, up there next to the railroad tracks, which connecting the campuses. Of the, of GTCC bought the old Daimler Chrysler bus building. And so they've converted that into a building, and they're building a tunnel under. And they've got barriers up and signs up, moving the traffic over. But if those signs and stuff weren't there, it's a big hole right now. It's about 25 feet down, if not more. Good 25 feet down. Because they, they finished one side. They, they, they dug it out. They put the corrugated arches in there. They covered that back up with rock and stuff. They finished that side. Now they moved it down and dug it out. And when they get done, they'll have a, a tunnel road under there. And... Um, but they put those barriers up. Why? To lead you out of destruction. The Holy Spirit puts signs up in your life to lead you away from things that are going to cause you damage or harm. And to lead you into the place that's good for you. Anybody ever, anybody ever gone hiking up in the mountains? Anybody ever got lost? Now, we took uh, a number of years ago, when I think when uh, Shannon was a senior in high school, she was the the uh, statistician for the soccer team. And we got the whole, we, we, whole Western soccer team came up to the cabin up there and they stayed with us. And we went over to uh, uh, the Boone Fort Trail over there off the park off of Moses Cone Manor. And we're going, there's a five-mile loop hike. Okay? Now, I told them all. I said, there are no right turns on this trail. Everything's a left turn. In other words, the trail is it's a loop to the left. If you stay on the trail, everything you do, if you couldn't do a fork, go left. Don't go right. Well, about 10 of them got to a place and took the right. Got out of the whole park, got into a neighborhood. Were lost for two hours. All out, the, they didn't know where they were. Stopping at people's houses and turning the water faucet on outside and getting water because they were thirsty. They'd been hiking for so long. They, didn't know, they had to have water or dehydrate it. We couldn't go look for them because we had no idea where we were going to look for them. They got off the trail. So when you don't follow the signs, and there's signs there. Leaving National Park. In English. It wasn't in Arabic or anything. You know, English. That should have been a 
a, 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 a hint. <laughs> you how to apply your faith. Now, with my toe last year, I mean, I knew what to do. I'm believing God to be healed. But I also had the leading of the Holy Spirit, what direction to take. I could have gone, nope, ain't taking no antibiotics. I'm not dressing it. It's going to heal in Jesus' name. Go and see that doctor. There's a slap in the face of Jesus. I've heard people say things like that. Maybe call me nine digits. If not worse. Because the concern about that is if it gets into the bone, you can go up the bone and you take your whole foot off. I have to start taking your leg off. The Spirit of God led me to do certain things as I was taking that path. I have my toes completely, totally, 100% healed. Hallelujah. I have my toe. I don't have a big hole in my toe. I don't have where they cut off part of it. I don't have any of that. I don't have an artificial toe attached to the end of my toe. Got mine. Well, you could have believed God to grow it out. It's a whole lot easier to believe God to heal it. And to do the things necessary to get it healed instead of, grow, you know, believing him to regrow it. People, people get stupid sometimes. I'll just believe God, you know. If it, if they have to, if if it rots, listen. I, I had somebody used to go to our church. They had a family member. They had they had so bad in the foot that they, they had it wrapped up banjo, and when they took it took the banjo off, the whole foot just fell off, oh. and they died that day. Yeah. I mean, it was just so gangrenous and stuff. It just fell off. And you can't see. We can't be stupid about stuff. The Spirit of God. Brother Hagin told Doug Jones one time, because he asked him, Dad, what, is it? what does the leading of the Holy Spirit have to do with faith? He said, it's got everything to do with it. He's talking, talking in particular about healing. The leading of the Holy Spirit's got everything to do with healing and, the, and, and faith? Huh? Because, see, we want to jump out there because somebody else did something such and such, took their medicine and threw their nitroglycerin tablets down the toilet and flushed them. They were instantly healed. Next guy doesn't. He's over there having a heart attack. One woman saw some guy had, you know, had glasses and, and the, the Lord told him to take your glasses off and stomp them. And, and he got instantly healed. His eyes got instantly healed. So this woman said, God's not a respected person. So took hers off and stomped them. Two weeks later, she came back to Dad Hagen and started talking to him about it because, you know, she's had a problem. What problem? She's running all on the curb, running people off the road. She can't see where she's driving. And so she's out there driving in public, can't see. He said, sister, put your glasses back on. And then as they get better, you know, start, you know, in other words, God didn't tell you to do something specific. So then let, the, let it come progressively. We have healings in the Bible that were instant. We have healings in the Bible that were healed as they went over time. In the end, you don't really care. Instant or as you went, who cares? I got it. Kind of like potty training. Now, I remember years ago in our church, we had competitions on who potty trained when. It wasn't church driven. We had parents that were, you know, it was so important to them when their kid potty trained. It was a competition on which one to potty train earlier. We lost. I forgot how old Nate was when he finally gave up the diaper. <laughs> but you know what I found out? When he started applying for jobs, nowhere on that resume say, how old were you when you potty trained? <laughs> Haven't found one yet. <laughs> this is true. We make things that are not relative important. Hello? We have to be led by the Spirit. So, so they got healed instantly. Great. Yours is becoming progressively. Great. Amen. Well, so-and-so had an ulcerated toe, and they got, we went to a prayer line, came out, it was instantly healed. Woo! I believe God, and four months later, mine was closed up. Woo! Because here we are almost a year later, and both of us had the same thing, a healed toe. And it was by faith. It was God. Amen? Don't get caught up in these things. Be led by the Spirit so that you're, you stay in confidence and you stay in faith and you don't give up because you didn't have an instantaneous. We don't see as many of those in the Bible as we do in, uh, progressive. 
Go wash in the pool of Siloam, and he came again to see him. Okay? Touch his eyes. I see men standing as trees. Touch them again. It wasn't instant. It took, it took more ministry. Amen? Um, three were to walk in the light. But for verse John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Psalm 119, 130, the interest of thy word giveth light. It giveth understanding to the simple. You can, listen, you know this, and I know this. How many lost power the other week when, when the hurricane came through? Guess what you can't do in your house in the middle of the night when a hurricane's there? See. You're walking around, it's, it's dark. You know, you, we use our cell phones now, but what if you can't find the cell phone? <laughs> or it's dead. We had, we had, you know, we had, we had to light candles and stuff. You can't see how to navigate, even what you've walked in all the time. Let's see, a blind person gets used to things, but you're not blind. We, we walk by our sight in the natural. You can walk into the same room, turn all the lights out where you can't see, and you'll stumble over the same thing that's always there. Or you're kind of going, I know it's here some boom boom there it is i know it's somewhere around here but if we walk in the light we'll see clearly our path where does light come from it comes out of him it comes from him we walk in the light as he is in the light amen and then last and i add this one you know is we're to walk in fellowship one with another Same verse, First John 1 says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much more as you see the day approaching. If you're going to walk and overcome and live a victorious life, you're going to have to walk by faith, be led by the Spirit, walk in the light, have fellowship with your brothers and sisters. Amen. So that we can live above the fray. Amen. Praise God. Next week we're going to go into a uh, teaching um, specifically more on but turning our, um, our defeats into victory. Okay. All right. And we're, we're, we're going to talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. We're going to talk about the fiery furnace. Amen. So be here next week for that. All right. Praise God. Remember this. We love you. God bless you. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Until we meet again, be blessed of God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.